Good morning and welcome to Word Bites on this um, holy day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> My name is Abidemi Iwato and today we're going to study chapter 3 of the letter uh, to the Hebrews. So we're going to read chapter 3 verses 1 to 19 like we usually do and then we will um, uh, highlight a few points. Um, within the time that we have. <laughs> okay, so if you get out your Bible, uh, your Bible app, you know, and uh, just make sure your phone is on silent if you do, if you use your app. Great stuff. Okay, so here we go. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 to 19. Okay, it goes, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. So as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. As has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Wow, what a powerful uh, segment of the scripture. Okay, so we finished uh, chapter two, talking about how uh, Jesus, um, because of what he went through, okay, um, it says because he, he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So he became a merciful and faithful high priest. So here, um, remember this letter was written to Hebrews, okay, the Jewish people, who had the background of the Old Testament, which was executed by Moses as a servant of God. So like in many other situations, this letter was written to clarify certain things, to, to make things pretty clear to those um, new those Jewish believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we, we start off by referring to them as brothers and sisters. Remember, the Bible says that uh, the last yesterday we talked about how Jesus uh, became human to partake of our humanity so that through death, he might be able to deliver us from the power of Satan. All right. So we are all his brothers and his sisters. So that's how this starts, you know, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling. And the admonition is to fix our thoughts on Jesus, focus on Jesus, who is the one that we acknowledge as our high priest. Amen. The one who stands 
on our behalf before God. Okay. Now it begins to compare, you know, uh, Moses and Jesus. You know, they both their ministry. He highlights uh, the letter highlights uh, a lot of similarities, but then some really crucial um, differences. So if we if we look in uh, verses one to six, we will say we will see that you know um, both of them, both Jesus and Moses are recorded here to have been faithful in God's house okay Moses was faithful that's recorded in the scriptures was faithful in all God's house is in uh, numbers chapter 12 and verse 7 he was a faithful uh, messenger a faithful uh, prophet remember when we started this uh, study we talked about we looked at a brief comparison between Jesus and the prophets okay the greatest of them as far as jewish people were concerned is moses so we're back to that comparison now and the the, the this letter is saying that they were both faithful moses was faithful as a servant in god's house all right but jesus is because he's still alive amen <laughs> he's still the 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 one over god's house but jesus is faithful as a son all right Moses was faithful as a servant, but Jesus is faithful as a son. Now, that has uh, a bit of uh, some differences there. In the sense that, you know, as a, a servant, you know, um, a son is the heir. Okay. The son is the legal heir to the father's uh, throne, the father's uh, whatever belongs to the father. Okay. And the son is the one that is committed that the, everything about the estate is committed to him because he's going to be the one to replace the father or, or whatever reason to rule with the father. But in the case of a servant, a, a faithful servant um, will still be a servant, all right? A faithful servant will not become a son, <laughs> hallelujah. But uh, Moses was really dear to God. The Bible says that he was the meekest man that ever existed, okay? The meekest man and beloved so much by God, okay, and by the Jewish people, because it was through him that uh, they received the Old Testament, the Levitical priesthood. They all came through Moses, and God did mighty, powerful things through him when he delivered the children of Israel by this one man Moses from uh, from Egypt and from the oppression of. Pharaoh in Egypt and led them through the wilderness okay but we see that uh, Moses the Bible records that you know later on we'll see it where the Bible's talking about the people who rebelled because of their unbelief simply because they did not know his ways they experienced his acts but they did not know his ways only Moses knew the ways of God in that generation okay so we move on from there, it goes to, okay, we say that they are both faithful, you know, um, and then it goes on to say that Jesus is worthy of greater honor than Moses, just like the builder of a house is worthy of greater honor than the house itself, okay? We know that Jesus, you know, uh, as the son, previously existing as the word of God from the beginning, the Bible says that all things were made by him. So as the creator, you know, is worthy of greater honor than the created Moses, all right? The, both, the, even though both of them were faithful to discharge their duties as given, as given by God. But Jesus is worthy of greater honor. Like it says, the builder is worthy of greater honor than the building itself. So the creator is worthy of greater honor than the created. And this sounds an alarm as well to every other person out there that is worshipping one thing or the other, created being Mother Earth. Or all sorts of weird stuff that Jesus is the creator and he's the one that needs to be worshipped. He's the one that has been enthroned to be worshipped by all the angels, but all all the created beings, okay, including us. Hallelujah. Okay, so then um it goes on in verse uh, from verse seven um right through to verse twelve, talking about how um, the children of Israel, referring back to their journey 
from Egypt to the promised land, how that they were not able to enter the rest of God because of their unbelief. And the Bible says they had they, they had a sinful heart, okay? A sinful heart, you know, that was hardened by unbelief. It was hardened by unbelief. Even though they heard his voice, remember they heard his voice on the uh, on the mountain, all right, when they were all there. Let's adjust this a little bit. When they were all there, they heard his voice. They were so terrified that they said Moses should go on to hear what God is saying and come and tell them. So they heard his voice, and they were not aware that he was there. And also they saw his acts. They saw how he displayed his power to deliver them from the bondage in Egypt. So they had no excuse not to believe when he gave them the instruction to cross over and possess the land. But because they chose not to believe, and this is a problem, unbelief is a choice. It's a hardening of the heart. You know, you see, the Bible says that you, when you look at the creatures, it, it points to the fact that there is a creator. All you need to take, look at is a blade of leaf and look at the intricate, we're still studying it up to today, the intri intricate way it is created, it functions, everything. You know that there must be a designer behind this. Amen. And people still choose to harden their hearts in unbelief. They choose not to believe, even though the evidence is there. So this is what this warning is about, okay? That the children of Israel could not enter God's rest of faith because that unbelief, that choice of not believing in spite of the evidence kept them out of it. And I just pray today that uh, none of us will be, <laughs> will be caught in that trap of unbelief. Unbelief says um, in one way, tells God that he's a liar. I don't believe you. You know, when you speak to somebody, somebody's talking to you and you say, I don't believe what you're saying. You know, that means that provide evidence. Otherwise, I'll take you to be a liar. And that's the same thing, you know, when we choose not to believe. The word has been revealed. Creation, you know, declares his glory and we still choose not to believe. That is calling God a liar. Amen. And that is um, a grave sin, according to the Bible. Okay. Missing of the mark. It's a sinful heart, the Bible says. And we need to be extremely careful, you know. And the Bible says that God was angry with that generation, you know, um, because they chose not to believe. Mm? Their hearts were always going astray. And he declared on oath in his anger that they will never enter his rest. I pray that none of us gets into that uh, situation. So, um, in verse 12, it says, see to it, that is, make sure, make sure, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. That's powerful. You've got to see to it. That to take heed unto yourself. Pay attention to yourself. Make sure that you don't have a sinful, unbelieving heart. That's always turning away from God. You're like a, a double-minded person. Today you are believing, tomorrow you are not. The Bible says that a double-minded person is like the reed, you know, uh, that is shaken, you know, by every wind of doctrine. That person cannot expect to receive from God. This might be why we have so many issues that we're believing God for, but they're just not coming to pass because today we're believing, tomorrow we're not believing, and so on and so forth. It says, see to it, make sure, whatever it takes, meditate in the word of God, you know, fast and pray. Make sure that you, you get rid of unbelief by all means. Study the word. See what God has done before. Choose to believe. Amen. So see to it you know, that you don't have a sinful, unbelieving heart that, turn, that keeps turning away from the Lord. Now, verse 13. This is where the title of today's uh, word bite comes from. It says, encourage one another daily. All right. You know, it says, encourage one another daily as it is called today. Because this will prevent the hardening of the heart by sin's deceitfulness. This is very powerful. Every single one of us, you know, in the body of Christ, we have uh, the duty, the obligation to encourage one another daily. And this is what word bites is all about. It's daily encouragement going through the New Testament. Encouraging everyone, you know, so that they are not hardened, their hearts are not hardened. 
You know, you need to keep repeating. You need to keep hearing. That's why we read the scriptures every day. Not just <laughs> read it once a year. No, no, no. Daily. Not just once a week. No, daily. Because when we read the scriptures, you know, because it's a mirror. All right. It shows us what's going on. What, it's, what adjustments will be made. For instance, if you look at your face in the mirror and you see that your your those who are very whatever about their looks, you see that your your eyebrow is not looking, you know, straight or whatever shape you want it to have, then you touch it up. In the same way, when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we read the Bible, you know, God speaks to us, the Holy Spirit speaks to us. If there's any area of our lives that we need to, you know, make amends and change, whatever, then we can work on that with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it says daily encouragement. Now, courage means that, you know, you do something in spite of fear. There's so many things that will be across. If God tells you to do something, you know, uh, some people have a default fearful <laughs> uh, mindset whereby the first thing they see is the obstacles. Fear just takes over. They have to do something. They just begin to feel all the obstacles will now start pointing itself out. That's a fearful mindset. But even then, those who don't have that kind of mindset, when you when God gives you an instruction to do something, you know, there will be obstacles along the way. You know, the important thing is to set off, not being, <laughs> not focusing on the obstacles, but focusing on the end result, the instruction, the end result that you have been given. Because you're not going to go on that journey by yourself. Okay? God is going to go with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So you focus on that. All right? So that is a place of encouragement where... Even when there are obvious obstacles, things that could introduce fear to you, you still choose to go and do it anyway. You do it still, you know, in, maybe you've not gotten rid of all that fear. You still carry on and do it anyway. It's like standing when you have done all that you need to do. Keep standing. Even though your knees are knocking, <laughs> you are still standing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this is very, very powerful. So each and every one of us has the responsibility to encourage one another on a daily basis. I know there are people who carry that special anointing, you know, of um, encouraging other people. But then every single one of us, because we're all in it together, we're brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. So we need this a call for us to encourage one another, you know, daily, so that we will not fall into the trap of unbelief and sin's deceitfulness. All right. Uh, and then the um, finally in verse uh, 19, we read there, it says, so we see, you know, talking about the um, children of Israel who, even though the journey was supposed to be 11 days, but because of their unbelief, because of their sinful, hardened heart, that they chose not to believe God, that he was able to take them there. The God who brought them out from under the oppression of 430 years, they chose not to believe that he's able to take them into the promised land that he promised them. So they refused to go to the promised land. All right. So the journey of 11 days turned out to be a journey of 40 years. So the Bible is talking about uh, them here. that God was angry with them for that, for those 40 years because they sinned. By their unbelief, their choice not to believe God and not to obey God. They were disobedient, okay? So because of that, they could not enter the rest of God. They could not enter the rest of God. We enter the rest of God by faith, by believing God and acting on what he said. So if we don't believe, we can't act on because faith is an action word, right? So when you believe, indeed, you really act based on that or you speak based on it because faith is... In your words and your actions as well. In your heart, your words, your actions. Amen. So when we believe God, then we act on it. And that's how we enter into the rest of faith. So we need to be very careful to make sure, see to it, that we don't get caught up in that uh, unbelief, sinful, unbelieving uh, status. And then we encourage one another as well, so that none of us gets caught up in that um, state. And that's the word bite for today. So if you've been blessed by this, uh, comment, like it, share it, um, and then click notification button. And if you're watching it on Summit on YouTube, it's Summit Ministries International UK. And when you're there, make sure you comment, you like, you share, you uh, click the subscribe button and the bell button to get to know every time we upload another video. There are many videos there that you can take advantage of and study. 
to show yourself approved. Amen. Praise the Lord. All based on the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now. God bless you.